G'day, how you going? This is Michael from O'Donnell's Aussie Homestead. Well, uh, today I need to um, uh, just feed the animals before I start. I've got a job to do with the rabbits. So I've got to raise up their cage, put some uh, more, uh, basically, over there, that's bitumen. It's a torn up uh, road and um, it'll go down really hard, but the good thing about it is it's, um, it's porous too. So I'll put that underneath their cage so that uh, it doesn't get boggy. Um, also, um, at the moment, it's been a little bit of a dish there. I think I've said in a past video. And uh, this way I'll fill the dish in and allow it to run out underneath the uh, wall. And uh, that way it'll be less smelly, you know. Uh, water and urine don't mix too well, either manure. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, I'll get to that. First of all, I'll just go whack a few, um, whack a bit of feeding the owl with the uh, goats and stuff. Now the goats have a little problem um, because they're so aggressive when you want to, any time extra food comes to them, I'm going to have to uh, uh, keep this um, tripod outside, otherwise they're just going to give me a hell of a time. Alright, um, I'll uh, go on to that now and uh, I'll set it up. There's my, uh, in my, little, my little peacock. Still haven't found him a girlfriend. Get inside, get inside. I left the gate open, I left the door open and uh, he's gone out for fun. Yeah, I've got to get him a girlfriend. He's, she's very un, he's very unhappy. Uh, everybody that comes in there, he attacks. <laughs> the funny thing is, he doesn't attack me. People say they had trouble with my Billy over here, uh, Sultan, that big fella over there. But he doesn't bother me. I somehow don't understand it. Um, my other sons feed him more than I do, so you think uh, wouldn't be the case. I just think he sees me as dominant, I suppose. And, or no no threat, one way or the other. Um, I'll just set this up now. Where am I going to do this? Oh. <laughs> right, 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 right. That looks like it might work. <sighs> yep, in one of the cages. At the moment, uh, these things have... They eat so quick and so much, you've got to put a board along here, otherwise they just jump straight out the door. They, they eat quail it so much. better than chooks because they're super quiet uh, you put them in a small area look even a budgerigar cage if you know what I mean about that big you put four in there and they're actually fun they're really fun Animals. Oh, what will we do now? Okay, I'll set you up here and 
They're my crazy animals, eh? Now while I'm feeding them that empty lately. There's Rooster here, if I turn me back, he's liable to attack me again. Uh, look, uh, 
my Brahmas there. They're very dirty because I let them outside, but uh, the big rooster, I've had several of him from his, his father and his grandfather before him. They're a beautiful rooster, especially when they're clean. But they're very aggressive. You know, normally you get, you have one rooster and two or three hens. Yeah, I can understand he gets a bit protective and he'll, uh, he'll try and ram you up. Now, um, just to show you who's boss, constantly going to his cage. I got hit so hard one time in the back of the leg uh, that it got infected because, you know, they've got feces on their spurs, whatever. I had to go, to a, get, I had to go and get antibiotics because it just blew up like a football. It was really hurt, really hurt. Um, but I don't work, worry, it doesn't happen that much, but when you get ten, ten chooks and one rooster, it usually means that, uh, I'm just checking something out, uh, it usually means there's no problem, because, you know, he thinks, oh, I've got plenty of bitches, you know, whatever, I can, uh, I can share, I can share them around a little bit, it's, you know, that's, Australops don't think that, I'm sorry, um, Brahmas don't think that way, they don't care if they've got a hundred, they, they'll still have a go at me coming in the yard to show dominance. But on the other hand, Australorps, that's the black roosters, um, uh, in here, you can see them yet, there's, a, there's a black ones in there. Now, oh, I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a problem to fix. One back and you might as well do it while you're here. Uh, Up. Yeah, we've got to close this up. Just find something. The, uh, when the women, these stupid goats break in, they, uh, they have a habit of um, letting all the chooks out. I want to mix my my chips. If you mix them and you want to get young and you want to keep the bloodline clean, well, you can't have mixed mixed eggs. Now, if I mix them up, I could end up with a half Brahma, half Ashlo, and I don't want that. Anyway, I'm back to my Oshlop. Have you got a male Oshlop? Yes. I haven't been attacked by them since I've ever owned them. They don't, they don't like that. But because I usually have a lot of girls, they're usually fine. But uh, I've had a couple of males and that's funny. You get, usually I like to keep one or two males. At least two. One case one buys. And uh, where, the, where the fun in that is, if you have You'll see one, even if it's way over the back in the back of the paddock, and he sees the, the dominant one sees the um, number two sneaking up on a hen to have his way. He will go charging across the paddock, and, and I've seen him on top, and she's just knocking clean off about a hundred miles an hour, bang, and it's on the ground, dazed. And it's it's hilarious to see when you see it happen because. You can imagine blacks having a good time and someone just slam dunks him. I mean, it's like them linebackers in America, you know, when they, they crunch each other or Australian football players when they ram each other. It is really funny to see. Anyway, uh, I, haven't got, I haven't got too distracted what I was trying to tell you, but um, I do get a little bit wandery. But at the end of the day, ocelots are a better animal. Those out them those black ones are a better animal any day than 
Brahmas. Brahmas go on the brood all the time. That's okay, I suppose. But then they, when they molt, they don't lay. Um, they have a very short window for laying eggs um, because they're all going broody all the time. Because they're, they're a rural heritage one. Uh, Ushlops, the black, are a heritage too, but they don't go near as much. They lay a lot more eggs. They're just a better animal. Why do I keep the uh, Brahmas? Because they're so pretty. Uh, the uh, buck's getting a little bit um, protective of his bit of hay and he's showing, trying to show dominance. Anyway, I'll uh, close this cage up. We should start with that. Uh. Yep. I don't know what's going on here. Uh. Yeah, I'm just trying to stop this from giving me trouble later. I hook it back. It won't lock close on the goats and lock them in, and then they'll start giving that other animals a hard time. Oh, I see you know, the uh, one just got rammed. There's a pecking order too in uh, in uh, goats, just like in chooks. And you know why they call it pecking order? Because chooks peck. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's, that's right. These animals here are right now. I just fix them up when you're off camera. Uh, you can tell when they're hungry. There's no running, one running over to the uh, to the fat, to the to the mesh here. So they're not hungry. Either of those, they're not hungry. They're all happy. Everybody's happy. Uh, all I've got to do now is work on the rabbits. Um, it's a bit uh, slow going there, so I won't bore you with it. Um, but I will set up the camera to... Uh, oh, what you... I might just do... I might just do this with you. I'll... Um, this is my where I'll keep a bit. I'm pretty low on hay too, you can see that. Get a small biscuit. Uh, I'll um, take this over to a bunch in the, I've got the big paddock. Like I said before, the, oh, hello ghost. Hey matey. Yeah. Uh, we've had a bit of trouble with foxes, so we're letting him run a bit more wild, wild and woolly. Yeah. Did you feed them this morning? You're looking, looking really chirpy this morning. You just get up or do something. Uh, oh, did you? Uh, just talking to Sarah, uh, Jason's my son, youngest, the oldest son, uh, his uh, girlfriend. And uh, sorry about that. But you can't ignore people. <laughs> um, I, uh, they've got a top pen here. It's got a bit bigger area, but. Um, it's all low and grass. We had rain last night, which is great, but it wasn't that much because there's no puddles, but you can see it's all had a little dose of water. And uh, I'll, uh, there are my, my little alpacas there. I'll just set the camera up again. I've only got a small tripod at the moment. There you go. I'll just call them up. Come on, 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 come on. Come on, 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 so short of grass. Don't mind. That's what I do occasionally. I tend to buy a few and uh, I tend to buy a few and sell a few and uh, just pays for the food. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, but uh, yeah, there should be a buck in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Yeah, there's that buck there. And that, it's a a, uh, it's a milk goat buck. And that's I don't worry about him. I'm looking for a. I suppose a, uh, it's a, a little weather, a little uh, doe. Uh, oh, there he is, blind as a bat. You can spot him, can't you? <laughs> He's the one with um, the jewels of large proportion. Yeah, okay. All right, we're on track. No, no, it was more than that. Two, two, four, six in here. Uh, we had about 11. Must be. She, she's looking a bit, a bit lean on the butt. Anyway, that's part of the reason I'm giving them this extra hay. Now that a bit of rain's coming, it'll green up and they'll put some weight back on quicker. Uh, thing about goats too, you, in this area, uh, and especially because I haven't got enough rotational paddocks, uh, they um, you've got to have trouble with uh, worms. So I've got a worm a lot more regular, and I think that's part of the reason too. Looks like they need to need to be wormed again. Otherwise, especially boars, um, they're really acceptable to it. If you want to beat the problem, you get a a natural running wild goat, the ones that are bred to that area, and you get them and you put a boar over them. Now, that way you only have to look after the one boar, uh, goat, you know, your buck. The rest will hardly ever have any trouble. Uh, down the road from me, there's a person with about, oh, about 40 running in their yard, and no one ever touches them because they're just running wild. And guess what? You never see dead ones. They've built up an immunity by selective breeding. At one point there, they probably were all dying. The ones that could handle the worms lived. So what you're doing is genetically you're making a super race, I suppose, you know. Um, yeah. So, I, and that's something else that's funny. My little uh, alpaca here, I don't shear her. Um, but it's, it looks like somebody's been cutting around the eyes. It's just naturally I don't know what the, what the go is, how it is, but it, you think it would grow over her eyes, but it doesn't. It doesn't grow over her eyes, the hair. So, what, she's shearing it herself, gutting out the little snippers? I don't know. It's weird. Look, look, look at that. Right around where the eyes are. She's, she's beautiful. Yeah. I've got to get her a mate. Like I said once before, I lost a mate. He, um, he got uh, snake bite. So we'll work on, I'll walk on now and uh, we'll call it quits and I'll get you, I'll talk to you a bit, a bit later. Look, if I haven't said it a million times, I'll say it again. Without you, there's no me. So what I would appreciate if you could subscribe to me, uh, because that way I can note that you'll be able to see when new stuff comes through from me, especially if you ring that notification bell. Um, it'll have up on there um, all, you read on all. Uh, after you hit the bell. Uh, that'll mean that every time there's one th something new comes through, bang, you're the first person to hear about it. Um, and please like it, because, you know, I need you to like it. Okay.